Ever wonder why some companies pay dividends while others don't? Are dividends really irrelevant? Now, if you're scratching your head and asking, wait, what's a dividend? Don't fret, let's break it down. In its simplest form, a dividend is a payment made by a corporation to its shareholders. It's a way for companies to distribute a portion of their profits back to those who've invested in them. Think of it like a thank you note, but instead of a card, you're getting cold hard cash. But not all companies do this. Some companies, especially those in growth phases, choose to reinvest their profits back into the business rather than pay the dividends. They might use this money to fund research and development, expand operations, or pay off debt. These companies believe that by reinvesting their profits, they can increase the company's value and, in turn, raise the price of their stock. Now on the other side of the coin, you have companies that do pay dividends. These are typically larger, more established companies with stable profits. They choose to pay dividends to attract investors who want a regular income. These companies might not have as much room for growth, so instead of reinvesting all their profits, they share some of it with their shareholders. So you might be thinking, well, getting a regular income from my investment sounds great. Why wouldn't all companies do this? That's a fantastic question. And the answer lies in the company's strategy and stage of growth. For some companies, reinvesting profits is a better use of capital. For others, paying dividends is a way to attract and retain investors. But here's the kicker. Some financial theories argue that whether a company pays dividends or not doesn't affect its overall value. That's right, they argue that dividends are, in fact, irrelevant. So, dividends might seem like a good thing, but are they really necessary for a company's success? Now let's delve into something called the Dividend Irrelevance Theory. This theory, my friends, was proposed by two economists, Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller, in the mid-20th century. Now these two gentlemen were not small fries in their field. In fact, both of them are Nobel laureates, so their theories are not to be taken lightly. So what does this dividend irrelevance theory state? Well, in essence, it suggests that in a perfect market, the decision of whether a company pays dividends or not does not affect its value. That's right, you heard me correctly. According to this theory, dividends are as irrelevant as the color of the CEO's tie. Now, let's break this down a bit. Imagine a company, let's call it Company X. According to Miller and Modigliani, it doesn't matter if Company X pays out dividends or not. If it does pay dividends, the value of the company decreases by the amount of the dividends paid. However, the shareholders are compensated by the dividends they receive. On the other hand, if Company X doesn't pay dividends, the value of the company doesn't decrease, but the shareholders don't receive any dividends. So in both scenarios, the total value that is the value of the company, a plus the value to the shareholders, remains constant. Miller and Modigliani argue that investors are indifferent between dividends and capital gains. If they want income, they can sell part of their holdings. If they don't want income, they can use dividends to buy more shares. Thus, the decision to pay dividends is irrelevant to the company's value. Now, you might be scratching your head and thinking, wait a minute, this sounds too idealistic. The market is never perfect and investors are not always rational. And you're absolutely right. But remember, theories are often based on assumptions that simplify the real world to make it easier to understand. So, according to this theory, dividends are irrelevant, but is this really the case? Let's explore this further in the next scene. However, not everyone agrees with the dividend irrelevance theory. In fact, many investors and financial experts stand firmly on the other side of the fence. So let's take a moment to explore the counter-arguments that challenge the irrelevance theory. Firstly, dividends are often seen as a sign of a company's financial health. A consistent dividend payment can indicate that a company is stable, profitable, and confident in its future earnings. This makes companies that pay dividends particularly attractive to certain investors especially those who value steady income and lower risk. In contrast, companies that don't pay dividends may be perceived as less stable or less profitable, even if they're reinvesting their profits for growth. Secondly, dividends can provide a steady stream of income for investors, particularly for retirees or those who rely on their investment income for living expenses. This regular cash flow can be a significant advantage, 
especially during market downturns when selling shares could result in losses. Now let's delve into the psychological aspect of receiving dividends. There's something inherently satisfying about receiving a cash dividend. It's tangible, it's concrete, it's a direct quantifiable return on investment. For many investors, this psychological benefit of dividends is significant. It provides a sense of security and accomplishment that simply watching a stock's price increase can't match. Moreover, dividends can also serve as a protective cushion in volatile markets. They can help offset losses when stock prices fall, reducing the overall risk of an investment portfolio. This is particularly important for risk-averse investors who prioritize preserving their capital over chasing high returns. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that some investors use dividends as a strategy to reinvest and grow their portfolio. They use their dividends to buy more shares, benefiting from the power of compounding over time. So there's certainly a case to be made for the relevance of dividends. But what's the final verdict? Let's step away from the theories and look at the real world. Are dividends irrelevant in practice? Well, the dividend irrelevance theory, as eloquent as it sounds, does not always hold up when you bring it into the real world. Picture a world with no taxes, transaction costs, or market imperfections. In that idealistic scenario, the theory might hold up. But alas, the real world is far from ideal. Take taxes, for instance. They can turn the theory on its head. In many countries, dividends are taxed at a higher rate than capital gains. So if you're an investor looking to maximize your post-tax returns, you might prefer a company that reinvests its profits rather than paying them out as dividends. Suddenly, dividends aren't so irrelevant after all, are they? Then there are market imperfections. The stock market isn't always rational or efficient. Sometimes, investors might interpret a company's decision to pay dividends as a positive signal about its financial health. This could drive up the company's stock price, providing an additional return to shareholders. In such cases, dividends can play a role in investors' decision-making process. Moreover, dividends can serve as a check on management's power. By paying out profits as dividends, a company can prevent its management from investing in risky or unnecessary projects. This can be particularly relevant for investors who are skeptical about the ability of management to use retained earnings effectively. Furthermore, dividends can provide a steady income stream for investors, particularly those in retirement who rely on their investments for living expenses. For these investors, dividends are not just relevant, they are essential. So, while the dividend irrelevance theory provides an interesting intellectual exercise, it tends to gloss over many of the complexities of the real world. Taxes, market imperfections, signaling, management checks, and the need for income all play a role in making dividends far from irrelevant. Clearly, in the real world, dividends aren't as irrelevant as the theory suggests. So, what's the conclusion? Are dividends irrelevant? Let's take a moment to reflect on the arguments we've explored. On one hand, we have the irrelevance theory, which posits that dividends are well, irrelevant. This theory argues that a company's value is determined by its ability to generate earnings, not by its distribution of dividends. The gist of it is that, given a choice between a company that pays dividends and one that doesn't, an investor should be indifferent. On the flip side, we have the counter-argument that dividends do matter. This perspective holds that dividends are a tangible return on investment, a sign of a company's financial health and stability. To the proponents of this view, dividends are far from irrelevant. They are a critical factor in investment decisions. Now let's consider the factors that might influence a company's decision to pay dividends. A company might choose to reinvest its earnings back into the business for growth, rather than distributing them as dividends. Factors such as the company's profitability, its investment opportunities, and the market conditions can all influence this decision. But let's not forget about tax considerations. In some jurisdictions, dividends are taxed at a higher rate than capital gains, which could make a difference to investors' net return. And then there's the psychological aspect. Some investors perceive dividends as a sign of a company's strength and stability, even if this isn't necessarily always the case. So while dividends might be irrelevant in a perfect market in the real world, they can play a significant role. But remember, whether dividends matter to you as an investor 
largely depends on your investment goals and strategies. Are you seeking regular income or are you more focused on long-term growth? Your answer to this question will likely determine your stance on the relevance or irrelevance of dividends.